was super fun to be having this art <laughs> class. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Cynthia and I, we wanted to try something different from the previous uh, Collective Wednesday course. And I think um, it's actually almost one month if not slightly more than one month since our last Collective Wednesday call. And the format of this call series is that it is a safe space for everyone who is part of the Footscape Collective's community, who, un- who wants to you know, get to know the people in this community, and also to kind of hear from one another in a, in a more personal and, um, I guess, authentic sharing exchange kind of uh, connection. I'm very, very thankful that Cynthia agreed to do this. And also, it's, it's <laughs> what we're trying to do today is, is a bit, um, I guess, different. So it'd be totally exp- um, experimental and experiential. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of introduction about you know, this person who is kindly step up to share. Cynthia and I, we kind of first connected on Facebook and I think we, she kind of found me first on Facebook and I can't remember why. <laughs> but I think probably we kind of resonated with quite a number of topics that we talk about that we are very interested in. So finally, when we met up, which was about two years ago, um, it's like, you know, old friends meeting, even though we have never met before. <laughs> um, and I was very thankful for her because um, she listened to me and you know, just held the space for me, even though... I, like literally at that time, I was a stranger to her. Um, and she also exchanged with me like her, her experiences and how, um, I guess our path is somewhat similar in the sense that we started off with a very long career in a particular job and then realizing that maybe, you know, we want something different. Um, so Cynthia kind of shifted into doing community work And along the way, she realized that, you know, there is something um, that she really wants to do more of. And and for me, when I just sit with her, you know, in the community that she serves, um, I'm just very amazed because it's not like she's telling me that, you know what, I, I do such an awesome job as a community builder or community worker. But it is how people respond to her. Um, like when I just walk with her the, down the, the, um, the neighborhood, um, you know, everybody treats her like this starts <laughs> here. From the youngest to the oldest, you know, everybody is like, you know, this is the, the neighborhood um, starts here. <laughs> who really cares for everybody, who knows where everybody's lives is, you know, and, and she really connects with them. And um, one of the ladies that I got to meet um, because of Cynthia was this lady City, and over a few months as I visited Cynthia and City, I saw City grow as a as a person, you know, like from one who, who is just feeling like mm, I'm just someone out there, um, you know, what can I do with my life? There's so much things I need to learn about my health, you know, how do I take care of myself? To a few months later, she herself was a community leader that was actively, you know, dis- redistributing food in her community. Um, and I thought that was so powerful. Um, and so I guess when, when I was talking to Cynthia and also observing how she does her work as a community builder, I'm just very amazed by how um, and somehow I get a sense that even though they are not, she's not a resident of that area, um, she is very much welcome. And because of um, her work, you know, people in the area actually grow. Um, so I just feel that um, just spending time with Cynthia and also, um, um, you know, being able to have this session today is, is, is just very wonderful. <laughs> and I think um, I was thinking that maybe Cynthia could perhaps do a little introduction about herself or, you know, um, and also bring us into this thing called learning conversation, which to me is totally new. But I think it is one uh, conversation where we really get to know one another and really get to practice listening. Here, yeah, you can take over from here. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking time to come here. Uh, before I do an introduction, um, I don't know, uh, we did some uh, sitting in a circle and I hope that uh, even though we are in Zoom, but just try to be uh, mindful of the position that we are in so that I hope this visualization uh, helps you all. So, um, 
before I start anything, I was wondering whether maybe we can take a deep breath and maybe just close your eyes for a while while I say something. I'm going to dedicate a poem to you all um, and see how we can start. Okay, so... Like a wild animal, the soul is tough, resilient, resourceful, savvy, and self-sufficient. It knows how to survive in hard places. I learned about these qualities during my bouts with depression. In that deadly darkness, sorry, uh, the faculties I have always depended on collapsed. My intellect was useless. My emotions were dead. My will was impotent. My ego was shattered. But from time to time, deep in the thickets of my inner wilderness, I could sense the presence of something that knew how to stay alive, even when the rest of me wanted to die. That something was my path and tenacious soul. Yet, despite its toughness, the soul is also shy. Just like a wild animal, it seeks safety in the dense underbrush, brush, especially when other people are around. If we want to see a wild animal, we know that the last thing we should do is go crashing through the woods, yelling for it to come out. But if we walk quietly into the woods, sit patiently at the base of a tree, breathe within with the earth, and fade into our surroundings, the wild creature we seek might put in an appearance. We may see it only briefly and only out of the corner of an eye. But the sight is a gift we will always treasure as an end itself. Unfortunately, community in our culture too often means a group of people who go crashing through the woods together, scaring the soul away in spaces ranging from congregations to classrooms, we preach and teach and assert and argue, claim and proclaim, admonish and advise, and generally behave in ways that drive everything original and wow into hiding. Under these conditions, the intellect, emotions, will, and ego may emerge, but not the soul. We scare off all the soulful things like respectful relationships, goodwill, and hope. A circle of trust is a group of people who knows how to sit quietly in the woods with each other and wait for the soul to show up. In such space, we are free to hear our own truth, touch what brings us joy, bring self-critical about our faults, and take risky steps towards change, knowing that we will be accepted no matter what the outcome. This is a poem by Parker Palmer, and it's called A Circle of Trust. And I'd like to welcome you in this Circle of Trust that uh, we have here. And um, I hope that uh, whatever is shared in this poem is what we can establish as we get to know one another, right? Okay, so you can open your eyes now. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for uh, participating. And I, uh, before we do anything, I think in any circle, we. Um, much as I've seen the names here, but I would like to ask you all to introduce yourself and maybe share how you feel with an action. Do not speak, okay? But share in an action how you feel today 
And then, what do you want to learn or discover today in this conversation uh, on your curiosity? All right, so maybe uh, I check that this is a talking piece, but then I realized <laughs> that in our whiteboard, we have a cursor. So, um, so uh, in, in any circle, we always say that the person who holds the talking piece will be the person who speaks and the person who speaks, the rest will listen. So that's how we practice circle and uh, respect one another. But um, today, I think um, uh, I would pass, who would like, I will, I will end the circle, by my, my, my introduction, so I would like to know who would like to hold the talking piece. Maybe you can raise your hand. I think this is Zoom, right? So it'll be a raise your hand. <laughs> who wants to introduce yourself? Then share an action, share an action, okay, on how you feel, and then maybe what you want to learn. Okay, am I supposed to do something? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I mute all of y'all? How do I do it? Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm very bad at Zoom, so sorry. <laughs> this is the first time, yeah. All right, who wants to share first? Yeah. Mm. I guess I could try. You can tell me whether that's the right thing to do. Yeah. So it's an action. We, um, yeah, introduce your name. First, say your name. Then after that, show an action on how you feel today. All right. Hmm. And then what do you want to learn from this today? Hmm. Yeah. My name is Trey Fen. Today, I feel very supported and cared for. Um, I think today I would like to learn how to, yes, hold a space so that um, everybody's views can be heard, um, so that we can have the outcome that we all want to see. Okay, thank you, Choi Fun. So what we do is that whenever someone introduces, we will say thank you, Choi Fun. And I, now's the time you all can um, unmute yourself and we can, <laughs> can affirm her by saying that. And um, Choi Fun has done a very good example, but... The only thing is that when you do the action, don't say it out. Just, just oh, the sorry. action. All right? No worries, <laughs> yeah. no worries. Okay, mm. the next person. Who wants to hold the carrot? <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, okay. Jamie, yeah. Hi, hi, I'm Jamie. Um, today, I, um, I feel like... <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was due to lack of sleep. Um, yeah, and um, through this session, I wish to learn um, about community. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah. Next one. I can go next. Okay. Hi, my name is Vivian. Hi, Vivian. <laughs> yeah. Um. I'm just happy to be here with everybody and also uh, to learn about how maybe we can hold space to, and also to hear about Cynthia's experiences. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Vivian. Yeah. Next. Hi, I'll go next. Uh, yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Yoke. Today, I feel... Uh, and uh, as to why I'm here, to, what I'm hoping to learn today, actually, I think I'm here just uh, out of a sense of uh, curiosity um, and uh, just just uh, very open to where this sense of curiosity leads and lands by the end of today's session. And thank you very much. Thank you, Yo. <laughs> or like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so Yo has spoken. Yeah. Anybody else? Eileen? Am I muted? Can you hear? Yes, we can hear you. Right. Okay, my name is Eileen. Um, I feel... And I wanted to get <laughs> energized. And I find that... Um, I find that sometimes communication when we are not talking and we look at each other through the eyes, uh, sometimes that is a form of communication. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. I also want to be energized. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh. 
Anybody here? Hi, I'm oh, Caleb here. Can you hear me? Okay, Caleb. Yeah, hi, Caleb. Yes. Um, <laughs> feeling happy because I found a new food place that I can buy food to eat. <laughs> <laughs> um, today I'm just uh, like one of y'all, I think just curious to find out more about community building and uh, especially learn from Cynthia as well. Yeah, that's it. All right. Okay, thank you. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll go next. Hi, YC. Yeah. Hi, my name is YC. Um, today I feel like uh, maybe. Uh, and um, so I'm here to uh, find out more about the community building, maybe listen to some first hand experience sharing and uh, see how much of that can be applied to uh, the community I'm trying to, you know, try to foster the spirits, you know. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, YC. Yeah. Yeah, I think KB. KB has not um, shared, right? Ken Bing, yeah. Yeah, hi, Ken Bing here. Um, today, I'm, now I'm feeling a bit uh, drained. So I hope I still can be keeping my senses awake and <laughs> mind awake throughout the rest of the time with you guys here. Okay. Thank you, Ken Bing. Yeah. So I think I'm the last person, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm Cynthia um, and I am, because this is the first time I'm doing this, so I can't feel what you're doing. Maybe I'll, I'll feel hungry and tired later on. <laughs> um, okay, what would, I, what would I like to learn is that I think I want to learn how to practice and be brave and also enjoy while I'm doing this. So that's what I would like to learn because <laughs> it's always nerve-wracking. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much uh, for doing such a wonderful introduction. And um, I think um, uh, before we start anything, I just want to share that this is not a learning conversation by for me to talk and for you to learn. But I wanted it to be like you sitting in a circle. Maybe like what you ask the questions, maybe we can do it in a, in a, in a form of conversation. Uh, and uh, I think there was some question about asking about how do you hold a holding space and how do what. So uh, maybe one of the things that before we start here is that I'm just curious about uh, uh, what does community actually mean to you all. So, um, so maybe you want to start the ball rolling about why, why, you, want to, why you want to know about community building and, and what's so, so, so interesting about community building that you want to know about. Yeah, maybe um, just say, um, who wants, let, okay, maybe we will do this, since you are all in a circle, right? And I will start, Jamie is not going to participate because Jamie is the timekeeper. So we actually have a timekeeper. So um, I will, I will uh, go, now we go in the sequence of a circle, okay? So you know where your seat, right? So who wants to start first? Um, I think, um, I'm always asking the who wants to start first because I'm going to answer and have a conversation with y'all. So maybe y'all can ask that question, that the burning question that you have, then we can have a conversation. And I, I would love uh, when someone asks that question that we can, anyone can, can, can participate, all right? And, and, and answer and or ask, uh, add on to that question, all right? So maybe uh, we'll go in a sequence with, uh, with, YC first, okay? Because YC is sitting beside the three star and one loves Trayvon. <laughs> and then we'll go in that sequence of the round, okay? Yeah, so I would like to know uh, what are your, you know, so-called, maybe the secret you know, to uh, holding, you know, a community space where everybody feel uh, the trust, like what the poem that uh, you have actually you know, said it, you know? Right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my burning question. Okay, that's your burning question. All right, so that, I think it's an interesting question that I uh, struggle because most of the time, when even when we do this uh, intentional uh, conversation that we have here, um, uh, we have to prepare ourselves. Uh, but yet, uh, a lot of things, uh, when you talk about, when you want to woo, like why is it if you want to woo your, uh, a girl or, or know someone better, actually that, that doesn't come in, right? 
it's an occupational hazard when we always go with the thought and uh, what to do next. But when you woo someone, you actually go and ask all those questions. So actually what you will do is that you will try to get to know that person better. So it's important to um, be relaxed. So even when we came into the circle, I didn't have to uh, wait for everyone to come in and do an introduction. So we can do something that set the tone to share that we are all in equal space. So circle is very important for that. Uh, and I was like uh, scratching my head on how we can do a circle in a Zoom setting. So it's important to, to, to do that and, and also set our expectations. So normally in ground rules, we will, we will kind of create a safe space and then we'll set the community, what we call a community agreement, like maybe be kind to one another. Like just now, uh, I did it in the check-in where I asked you, what do you, want to, what do you want to learn and what do you want to do? So, and I said, I want to have fun, I want to have relax. Mm -hmm. So these are things that we can also um, consciously or intentionally do. So, um, and uh, I don't know, with that setting, does it kind of make you all relax instead of kind of say, okay, what's the action next to do? So with that curiosity and uh, openness, um, this is how we can uh, create a safe space and then, then it doesn't become so much of a hit, but it also uh, brings the heart there and, and the safe space. So it's, it's, as you can see, the way I try to engage you all is very exper experiential. So it's a practice and there's no, no hard rule. Just know that all these are just tool of engagement. So it comes with your intention, a good heart, I mean, your in, I, I don't mean a good, but your intention. What's your intention? Sincerity. And learn how to relax and enjoy uh, that, that, that whole process. So I, I hope that answers your question, uh, YC. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So the next person is in sequence will be... Uh, or, or if you feel that that resonates with you, you want to add on, you just add on, okay? And share your experience, okay? Because I'm not... I just want to share that. I'm also learning, I'm still learning and discovering and uh, hosting oneself is also learning how to attend to yourself and listen properly because like sometimes you ask a question but you're actually not listening because you're already thinking of a second step. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. My turn? Yeah. All right. Um, I feel drained. Um, I overcome over commitment to different gardens and I feel, I feel tired <laughs> and uh, what I think about community is uh, I enjoy getting to know new people uh, at the same time uh, sometimes I also think hey uh, shall we do together but most of the time uh, at the garden People will ask, uh, you own this? You do this? May I have this? Then I think, why not we come to do together? If you grow, of course, you can, you can take. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I joined this uh, Zoom call is to understand uh, what is the personality or charisma uh, that we need to engage people to do what we do together. Okay. I think there's no formula, uh, but thanks for sharing the, that, that, that thing because I think this is also a struggle that I feel is as a community builder that um, we actually all come with a kind of perception or uh, a view or expectation. Like just now you came with, um, you saying that you want someone to do something uh, and uh, in the garden and you want something. So I hear a lot of wants and a lot of what. But sometimes what we need to come in the table, like just now when we came, was come as we are and mm. come without the expectation, but share that joy. I don't know how to share that thing. It's, it's really called practice and experience. And um, like even for me, like now when you say that, I didn't say that I know the answer, but I actually struggle with you. And I'm also thinking of uh, how to reply to you, but. I think one of the most important things is that uh, it's called hosting yourself. Okay? When you come in with agendas, you're already changing the shifting, the, the expectation or the dynamics of the, the build community that you work. You actually come in with a perception and expectation. I mean, it's good to have aspiration and uh, you want to get to engage someone. But 
it shouldn't come with that kind of imposing expectation. It, it, it kind of hinder and stop you from what you actually want to enjoy. And the reason why you, you, you do gardens, what's the reason, Wailian? Why do you do gardens? Why do you do that? Is it because you want to have 500 recruits and be the general of a good garden? or yeah? So why do you do gardening? Why do you it do? is a therapy for myself. Yes. So do you actually enjoy doing gardening alone or with someone else? Mm, both. Mm -hmm. So where, 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 where do you actually encounter the moments when you, you connect with someone when you do the gardening? Connect to someone. Mm. Well, it takes it takes a while to to build the relationship and trust. And I actually I don't grow plants. I do composting. Mm -hmm. Yes. So most of the time, people say ah. Without understanding, they will say ah cannot smelly. So did I smell? <laughs> I was thinking like, is it? <laughs> <laughs> or is it that I feel uh, myself a bit inferior or, or mm. what? Yeah. But there is also some people who come and ask you why you do that, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and that's when the curiosity of that someone, then you, you share with that someone what you do. So that's when you are most relaxed and when you have something that is in common. So that's the part of besides only uh, setting uh, your, the, the expectation right. It's uh, also learning how to connect with what gives you joy and what connects that person. So it's, you don't have to be a, go there with that kind of thinking that just because we are community builder, that we are the leader or we have to do something. The expectation is, should not be that way. We are just all fellow human beings. And uh, actually to be a community builder is to learn how to be a longsider. It's not a, that's why it's a circle. Circle, there's no leader. There's no um, uh, thing like who goes first. Like when the first start, it was anyone came in at a different timing and then finding their own position. I didn't even say who sits where. All right. Uh, and then uh, the second one was random. Anyone could, could introduce themselves. And how did we, how did we uh, do was because I set the tone with the poem and that, that we want this space to be safe and that we want to have respect. So we gave time for them to share what they wanted to say. And then the third one is I'm using a sequence where we can, we can have everyone. So it's actually letting everyone have a voice and everyone will be heard and listen. So, but that happens when you say, when you're most relaxed, when you have something that you connect with a person, which you don't have to uh, connect with everyone. It doesn't happen that way, but it's learning how to, to respect everyone that, that, that's in the circle. And then, um, and then the last one is um, to host yourself. So, so hosting yourself is the hardest actually. Um, learning how to be respectful and listening and uh, not impose your, your expectation, but go with that curious, curious lens. So maybe with that kind of um, uh, perception that you come into the garden and you want to uh, know your the community, maybe that will be less stressful and uh, more Enjoyable because what you had the intention of the gardening was it, it brings you joy and it's thera uh, therapeutic. And compost might be smelly to others, but to you it's a delicacy. <laughs> and, and, and it doesn't matter because you love what you're doing and it, 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 it helps in that thing. So I don't know whether that uh, we resonate with you or others who resonate with that or you want to ship, ship in. Yeah. Does that answer your question? My name? <laughs> yeah, ask some more then. It's huh? okay. That's when you does that. No, what I answer. mean is um uh yeah, recently I think recently you see straight time, right? They say community garden care. And I say it does happen. It also happened to you know, I also met people like that. But when I talk to one of the senior, mm -hmm. he said, Never mind, people take law. <laughs> So I find that myself, I'm not as tafang, tafang, ah, big hearted as him. Mm. But I really find that uh, uh, the people who take should also learn to give back. So the mm. old man has already, has already up to the standard. So mm. he, he, he's not angry. But mm. 
uh, I'm feeling uncomfortable. I feel that the person who takes should also give in a token in another form. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Okay. So so that is the struggle, but I think uh, yeah, okay, la, son. <laughs> Okay. Right. So, anybody wants to share or um, you want to add on to what she shared just now, or maybe give some words of encouragement? Yeah, maybe. I have something to chip in. Also, something that I learned from uh, some of my friends. Mm -hmm. um, um, something of this nature. Um, there are some friends who who, who always say, and and who, who think in the good um uh, side of it, say that the thing must be. Or, or, or it seems to be that some, some of these people who take these things, um, or regardless of what thing is it, the thing must be pretty good in their uh, view so that mm. they, are, they, are, they are willing to take uh, mm. these things and, 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 and not destroy it. Yeah, so if they are taking and, then, and, uh, uh, and, and they choose to take and not to destroy things, that means that that thing is of value to it. So they perceive it to be in a positive light. So on that note, uh, or some of my friends say that, eh, then, 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 okay, at least that thing is bringing some happiness to someone, some positive to, to someone, rather than it being a destru uh, uh, destructive act. Okay. Yep. So, so, anybody else want to add on this, uh, like the same case scenario that um, Oilian faced and Kim Bing was just mentioning about someone taking because, yeah. Anything else you want to add before? Take is better than destroy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what do you actually hear from, from her story, uh, from her sharing here? Uh, maybe you want to, anything that you want to clarify or ask before we discuss in depth? I think it's a very good um, situation that we face when uh, we have different opinions or different views of her, why, why we use, for her case, it's a garden. Uh. Yeah, so how do she engage and how do, do we have a good uh, practice of how we uh, use the garden? So. Is there anything else you want to clarify from this conversation? Like, yeah, before we, we discuss on what you think, uh, yeah, you feel and all that, yeah. Chai <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. I got reminded of one of our earlier conversations, Cynthia. <laughs> Yeah. about how, you know, sometimes like the community, like Foodscape Collective, we have a, a garden in Boon Lay. And where maybe we are bringing in something that is new to, to the local community and yet at the same time we want to, you know, do this with the local community and hear their voices. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think I remember you saying how like, um, yes, we need to be able to hear um, what the different voices have to say. Um, and, and at the same time, um, having the role as a community like builder, we do have a, a role where we can influence. Um, but then this is where um, the influence is where you can kind of um, is it guide or um, kind of uh, give a different perspective on how things can be done. Um, but at the same time, because you are in a community, you do not impose. Um, it's kind of like putting it out there and then um, the people can can say no, <laughs> literally, you know, it, because they are the, the members of that community. But then there's also that part about, you know, who do you, how do you then define who is part of that community that it, um, you know, this, this culture or this understanding is shaped. Um, because a side thought that I have right now is um, when I first started my community garden with my neighbors, pretty much everybody I could work with except one neighbor who was a, in, principal and he basically told us that look you know for this to be a community garden every five houses have to come down every weekend to you know do this duty at the garden so that it is community because everyone is contributing um, and then at that time people was telling me like hey you know um, why do you want this person in your team uh, in your community because he, he is very obviously someone very different from the rest of us which made it also very uh, a big struggle for everyone who is trying to keep this community garden going. Um, so it was actually a huge relief when he left the estate, so he left the garden as well. Um, but at the same time, I think that was that time where we were like, you know, how do you handle voices that um, is a bit divergent <laughs> from the rest of the group? 
and also um, you know if you do have a certain stand like say for example maybe you do allow people to take your produce as long as they care for the garden as long as you know they they are very friendly um, but mm -hmm. you know what if people do not um, kind of follow or they do not agree to the community norms okay yeah Okay, thanks, uh, Trifan. Also, um, anybody else want to add before? Or, or do you actually experience something what they're talking about? Basically, it's about uh, different of views when we gather together and how do you actually want to build a community uh, with, which is inclusive? Okay, so uh, do you all face this similar problem and uh, uh, you want to know more uh, before I talk about this? Huh? Sorry, uh, I'm, I'm uh, not that good at my <laughs> Zoom. Okay, uh, I don't know why I can't see everybody's face. <laughs> okay, but anyway, um, hearing this uh, brings me to, uh, I think when I face, I, I, I don't face in the garden because I don't do, in, in, I'm actually a community worker working in a family service center uh, setting. And uh, the, the platform that I use to engage my community is actually a Goodwill store. And um, so um, when I had that Goodwill store, of course, the, the, the thing that we want to cultivate is the spirit of neighbors helping neighbors. All right. So, but the, the, the thing is, because it's such an open concept in the, in the space that we have um, in the center, and we don't kind of like, Say, like, you know, you go to RC, you got to register, be a member. It's not that way. It's, it's an open space where anyone can come in. So how do we actually um, try to, to uh, bring this, um, make this space, uh, how do you say, uh, welcoming? And yet, how do we practice the spirit of giving uh, and uh, respectful giving and what? So it doesn't come easy. So I would also like to share, like, um, uh, even for the garden, um, it's important that when you have this platform, what is your true intention? You have to bring clarity to that. So the messaging is very important. So first thing, you need to know what's your messaging. And uh, that means yourself have to be very clear about why you do the work that you do. Why do you actually have this community garden? What is it that you want to do? And this is uh, first. Then secondly, you have to also understand that there's people who come with different views. And uh, you're not here to do conversion. Okay, you know what's conversion, right? It's like recruitment. Uh, like that person comes to your garden, you must follow that. Then it becomes like a membership thing. It's no more a community building because it's, what is community? Community is anybody you are, you are inviting. It's, a, it's uh, being inclusive. So, so it's not about conversion. It's about invitation. And when you do invitation, it doesn't mean that person will listen to your conditions and that's something that we need to to accept it's not it's not something that we can control so that comes back to why i'm saying i'm a community builder so a community builder is not the leader it's not a what so what does a builder do or, or maybe i'll use the metaphor of a farmer uh, what does a farmer do okay so if i if i'm sowing the seed in the ground if i just say i want to have uh, uh in this crop, I want to have uh, corn and I want to have uh, maybe 1,000 uh, uh, plants of corn. I can't control by like saying I only sow 1,000 seeds. I can't do that. All right. So for every seed, I can't even say that one seed will sprout uh, one corn, uh, one, one shoot of uh, plants. So as a farmer, what do you think a farmer does? Maybe I'll ask the question. What do you think when a farmer sows the ground, what do they actually do? So more. Huh? So what? Throw more, right? Yeah. Cast more, right? Cast and more. And we, 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 we cannot control what is happening, right? So what, they, what else does a farmer do? If they want to reap a uh, 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 bountiful of crop, they have to tilt mm -hmm. the ground. Yeah? Right? So hard work, when the hard farmer tilt the ground, uh, farmer sows, does he guarantee that they will have the crop that he wants to have. Mm. What else does does the farmer needs uh, to do or can do when you do farming? Sunlight. <laughs> yeah, sun is not 
plant is not under our control, right? It's something that we can't control, right? It's something that comes. Or maybe you, you uh, someone said, okay, now we will plant it under a greenhouse and then we will control the light, we control the humidity. But you cannot control an earthquake, you cannot control uh, what? But you also, even if you put in a humid, uh, in a very uh, controlled environment, which is a greenhouse thing, the plant you want to plant, also you cannot control how many plants come out, right? Mm. So that's the same as a community, uh, when you want to do building a community or growing a community or having a community garden. You can share, you can cultivate, you can uh, spread the influence by spreading the seeds of your intention. And you can clarify by taking out all the weeds so that the, the, the seeds can prosper and grow. But can you control what comes out from that? Or which seed grows or which seed don't grow? Or it grows on uh, fertile ground or it doesn't? You can't, right? Even in a, a greenhouse effect. And that's something that we need to learn how to expect on our expectation. That when we go and uh, talk to a person which is part of your community, you must understand that that person has his own choice or her choice. And what we can do is share and show. So it's the intention. So that it's very important. You need to know that. So if just say that Garden, that, that person uh, comes, like for me, the Google store. So my intention is I want people to donate uh, respectfully. But some people just dump. And that's their expectation. So I, what I can only do is I try to get to know that person better, explain the, the principle and guiding principle of um, uh, why I have this uh, Google store. And also learn how to say no. So there's sometimes... Um, when you are talking to that community member, so if just say, uh, just now YC was, uh, Oilian was saying about the uh, challenge where someone takes without permission and or destroys the garden, right? And takes something, right? So what you can have is, first thing, what do you think, uh, what do you think Oilian can do if, if in this context of, uh, as a, what can she try to do with the person who takes Oilian? What do you think she can do? I actually Besides, ask the person who take to volunteer. <laughs> oh, how did you how did you ask that person to volunteer? I say uh, the plants take time to grow. Uh, we we spend time watering the plant mm -hmm. and, and, and preparing the soil. So uh uh what do you call that? Mm. You put in effort, you get reward. But now you take without putting in effort. <laughs> okay, so how did that person respond to you when you shared about that? And did, did the person uh, volunteer or not volunteer? No, I moved forward, he stepped step backward. I moved forward again, he stepped backward again. Oh. So it's quite interesting, the body language. Mm. <laughs> but okay. she never stopped. Taking, okay. Yeah, in my presence, she never stopped. So how do you feel then, this is something you can't control, right? In that sense, if of course you have shared your intention to that person, but how do you think you can host yourself? That's where you as a farmer, like I'm saying, so like now you know that um, you have already shared with her your intention and then you invited her, you extended mm -hmm. the invitation to her to volunteer because to explain the, the, the reason why you have this garden. So, so it didn't happen. So what do you think you can do? What? Hmm. What do you think she can do? Anybody want to chip in? What do you think she can do? <laughs> because it's a really a struggle. That's how it happens. It's, it's really a struggle. I wonder whether... Plan. Actually, I wonder whether it will be someone else from the garden team who actually talks to the person. Um, because if Oilian moved forward to this person and the person is walking away, um, maybe the person doesn't want to engage and you know share more. Um, but is there somebody that the person can talk to who you know um, is she's willing to open up? I think um, maybe there you can have a maybe a a different conversation. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, at least that's my thought right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Okay, so yeah, um, Caleb, you or Kimbing or YC, if anyone wants to say, yeah, yeah, but remember I was talking about hosting yourself and also mm -hmm. about um, expectations. So, so uh, for my context, it was where a lady came and um, so I just said, okay, um, you can only take this much. And then, but they kind of like, whenever I go somewhere, they will kind of take some more clothes and then take and take and take. So it's very hard to, it's like playing a catch, a uh, uh, mouse and uh, 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 cat kind of uh, situation. Mm. And of course I was very, I struggled. I was very angry. So I was like saying, hey, this is not what you're going to do. Then, then I realized that one of the things that I needed to do was uh, which is reflection uh, is to understand where I was coming because it became a bit more I became more assertive remember we are talking about the, 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 the wilderness about your soul being what so I became very assertive and then she got a very bad wipe she even reported me to police saying that I was being um, uh, how do you say uh, picking on her picking on her because she took a lot of things but actually uh, saying that I didn't do it I was biased and what so also make me become reactive and defensive. So sometimes mm -hmm. our vibes, body language does come out that way. So it's not easy because that struggle of the human being, the pride, the ego comes in. So that's why I say hosting oneself is very important. Of course, mm -hmm. one of the things that I say, you have to break that, the perception that not everyone is, we are not going here for conversion. We cannot uh, try to win that someone over no matter how it tries, like I'm talking about the farmer, no matter how he feels, there's a certain part of the growth of the seed comes from the seed and from nature and from, from things that we cannot control. So liking it that I, I also had to learn how to let go. And letting go is also learning how to guard our emotions and know what we are here for and what is our grounding. Are we going to be swayed but because of this one incident that this person doesn't follow that that the whole, whole intention, are you going to give up your intention of being a builder? And also to know your role. And, 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 and when I learn how to uh, admit and acknowledge, I'm also a fellow human being. And she was triggered to, to react to me because she sends a negative vibe from the way I, 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 I kind of worked with her. And I had to even, um, I, I can also say I'm traumatized because she called a police on me, right? So it becomes like, uh, quite scary, right? How do you want to uh, engage or get to know that person? And I, I honestly felt I, I am not even ready to talk to that person because it's like, it's so offensive and it's so hurtful. So I, I think one of the things that I had to do was process it myself. And when I went to process it myself and I got to be aware that about my limitations, number one is uh, my limitations. Number two, um, also um, know her situation, where she comes from, why she behaves that way, and also how to learn how to respond. So that's learning about uh, your own limitation, why she behaves that way, and how to respond. So there was few ways to respond. One of them is disengage, or maybe bar her from coming, advocate, oh, don't put a face there and then ban her from coming. Or one more way is when she comes, you go away, close two eyes or close four eyes, so that you just let her think. Lah. Another one is actually inviting her, which is to find out more about her. And that's what I couldn't do, but my colleagues supported me, was to get to know her. And uh, through knowing her, I'm not saying that we solved the problem, but we know her and got to know her as a human being and where she comes from. Actually, um, this person had some um, mental, mental, mental uh, illness issue and also certain uh, behavior habitual behaviors that uh, what but when the uh, my colleague talked to her more she was very um open and listen of course there's days that she doesn't listen and that's where we have to also know that uh, it's not about the it's not about uh that we should uh we, we always get good outcomes uh, that's what i'm trying to say but of course, there's ways for me to react, right? From these situations, how come my colleague can do, I cannot do? It can also be kind of, kind of pride issue. But then that's not the intention. So I had to learn how to accept and also be, 
acknowledge. And I also, from there, what I did was I, I, I realized because of my capacity of uh, not being able to be inclusive, I, uh, the way I coped was I actually went to learn how to, to manage my uh, feelings by doing more reflection. Another one is also learn more about mental illness, which I actually went for some courses in uh, uh, IMH to learn about certain hoarding or behavior. But then when I, when I understand that and I'm more equipped, uh, of course, with her, I, I'm still having a challenge to, to, to I, I don't deny, I, I'm still not having, a, sometimes I can talk to her nicely, sometimes I'm on a bad day, I, can, I, I cannot respond nicely or whatever. But, but because of her, I got to thank her that she actually made me become more aware about me, uh, that I needed to learn how to learn how to grow and uh, host myself, be confident and comfortable with who am I and that I'm not here to, to convert and to bring everyone that comes to the, to the, my platform to what but if it's about uh, letting go and also learning how to um, uh, so from there uh, it helped me to learn how to uh, be more intentional when I engage with people so it, it helps me understand uh, where they come from and when I when I uh, helps me with my clarity of my role and my my, my um, messaging so it it's not about um, so what I did was uh, moving forward, I, I had some others who came with mental, uh, so I had to even say, okay, let's be consistent. So I say, okay, this space, you don't touch, uh, you're welcome to come here. If you have anything you want, you can come and look for me. Uh, or, and I also start engaging by asking them questions and about their family, how long they are here, by asking this uh, genuine questions. And, and some of them actually became volunteers, which is quite interesting. And because we, 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 we kind of like uh, manage that thing. And um, of course, there's times when I walk away, they will take things. And that's where you have to learn how to let go. It's okay. Because in the end, it's not about the things they take. It's about the relationship I want to build. And I got to know that person. So, so uh, even I just want to say, if some of you are married or some of you are, sometimes even you're, the person you love, you also have days where you want to, don't want to talk to that person. So it's normal. So I think that's where I learned to grow. And I learned to accept. But most important is I learned how to um, host myself. Because sometimes that's what it only happens. It's like for the farmer, if just say his crops were devastated by uh, uh, bad weather, he can also say, I give up. I just sell my land and go away, right? But what can he do next time? He can start a new crop. He can start again. And he doesn't allow one uh, uh, crisis or something that happens to say that I'm not going to invest or, or, or sow as many seeds as uh, what I'm going to, he's going to still do whatever he does. Because why? Because he has that, he knows what he wants to read, he knows the message or intention he wants to do. So that's, that's how you can do the thing. Yeah, I'm mindful about time now, it's 9.30, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does that help with uh, answering? Because some, someone asked about hosting yourself and about how to manage with uh, Engage, but it's, it's that kind of... Uh, sharing uh, yeah yeah anything yeah should we try to do another question um, yeah uh, are you okay because it's nine twenty, and i know <laughs> kambing is very tired already <laughs> 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 okay who wants to go with another question but i think that helps the answer about hosting yourself right yeah, mm. yeah. okay i think you covered do... a lot of ground in your answer <laughs> yeah okay all right Anybody else? Uh, maybe, maybe let me ask a very generic question uh, regarding uh, uh, I, I think firstly, my, my, my first question is um, who is really in the community? Uh, all right, And then how do you define the scope of that community? How big or how, how wide it, it should be? Because and, and, and therefore, whoever comes, for example, using the example of the community garden, if, it, if the person comes from uh, beyond the, the community boundary that you deem it is, uh, do we uh, accept the person or not, for example? Uh, so it's basically, uh, who are we talking, who are we really talking about uh, when we are talking about community building? That, that's number one. Number two is maybe a, a rather short, shorter version is uh, who, who give you the mandate to be the builder in that sense? Um, would, would, would that, that resident staying there think that, hey, who are you? Uh, uh, why, why should I listen to you type of thing? Uh, who, who sets the mandate? They set the mandate or you as, your, uh, as a community builder decided with your team 
you do some something like that and and then and then uh, set out to do with that objective and whatsoever yeah yeah right yeah, that, yeah. that's about it yeah Okay, so you ask who is um uh, Caleb just just to make sure I answer you correct. So you ask the question who is who is your community and how do we uh, define community? Very good question. And another one is who is actually the um who who steps up and uh, plans and organize uh, the mm -hmm. things uh, or is there a, a form or shape uh, or sequencing mm -hmm. right? So uh, on, the, on the mandate, la, I mean, we're yeah. yeah, very political, but it's okay. just the mandate okay. of it. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. So, um, like one of the things that uh, we did today was, um, I'm just using this as a, 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 a conversation of how uh, through Trifon that uh, a, a topic came up and it was having a conversation with a community builder. And I said, we're going to use a learning conversation to, to facilitate this discussion. So. The community that I wanted to look for, actually Trayvon said, you wanted how big a group you wanted. She asked me this question. She said, you want a big group, you want 30, 30. And then I said, I, I was very specific. I said, what do you want to do? Because my practice, um, I'm not a person who likes to teach, teach by what I like to show and I like to model. So I'm a, I'm a practitioner by, by what. So I told her, if it's only one hour, which really <laughs> uh, extended, but um, uh, I had to be very mindful of what I have to achieve here. And I wanted to make sure that everyone that comes for this uh, session uh, benefits. So it's again back to intention. All right. What is the intention of what you want to do? Okay. That defines the scope of community that you want to build. So that's how you filter your what. Because community garden can be very big. Can be, wow, you can even plant flowers. Like you can plant vegetables. You can plant uh, herbs. If you want to do very big, it can even be crop cult cultivation or whatever. So it depends on who you want to work and or like for Oilean is compost. So compost was is her main. So you got to find what's your intention, what is your objective. This is the clarity you got to use. And I you notice I never use objective. Okay, so it's very important about intention. All right, then you share this intention, and then you see who comes in, and it's an invitation. And that's how you filter because there were people who will be drawn to it and there are people who will not be drawn to it. And sometimes, of course, there will be people who you even have to do push or rather a pull. That's where the role of you ask me a question about how do you know when to step? Uh, I, you, you notice I'm using words that's very different from I'm intentionally doing that. How do you step up and how do you um, step back? So as a community builder, I had to learn this, that what is my role? So basically, it's coming back to you again. What's your intention? Why you want to have this community? And what role do you want to play? So if I, you ask this general question, so I will ask myself, going back to this group thing. So I know you want to learn about community builder. So how do I want to facilitate? Of course, it was quite difficult because um, uh, I couldn't see all your faces. You notice I was trying to grapple because that's, a, that's the good thing about having face and a circle time is that a circle is that everyone has a chance to see everyone's face. And also be mindful about everyone having a voice uh, to, to hear what you need to say. So, so um, I was trying to see who step up and who can host back. Uh, so uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's, it's not an easy skill to, to do that. So um, to be honest, um, uh, the, the thing that will bring you here is like what you want to do. The curiosity, the interest or even a, niche, a passion that you have. So that's something that's common that will draw you all to come and talk. So when we do that, we have to be very careful of the setting. That means having an equal position. And there will be people who are, will be itchy, itchy, like want to say, I want to, hey, yeah, so slow, lah. can you just do this? And then they will step up. And there will be, when you actually give everyone a chance to show up. And that's called discovery or gifts. And I think the like a voice that's not, able to talk here. So that's how we as a community builder have to learn how to do, learn how to what we call step in and step back. It likes, it's like a rhythm, it's a dance, but that's how we do that. And sometimes like uh, one of the uh, uh, thing that I, I, I struggle a lot was face-to-face uh, -face connection. I always thought that engagement has to be a face-to-face, -face, which I'm still struggling with. But uh, through COVID, I learned something very interesting. It was always a case where, as a community builder, I will like, like what Trayvon said, I'll go out and say, how are you? They are not the one who kind of say how you are and all that. 
But now because of COVID, I can't go and say, hello, how are you and all that, right? So, but are they, are they surviving? Are they doing well? Are they what? They're thriving because you're not there. So sometimes absence makes a heart grow fonder and sometimes not participating and learning how to step back and not do anything can also bring what? So like going back to the crop uh, farmer, farmer man, uh, situation, Sometimes letting the ground uh, rest, uh, there's other things that can come or there's a job uh, as a crop rotation or a different kind of uh, seed that's some, there's some who come up. So it's actually very intentional. So it's how you feel, Caleb, it's how you host yourself. If you are able to and if you are willing to give time, actually people will step up. The only problem is that because we are so fast-paced and we have what we call KPIs or there's an agenda or you have your own expectation or perception, that's where actually things where you come and you need to get in control or you rather say, um, Chaifan, since you arranged this Wednesday collective, uh, what Cynthia shared has no, no relevance to me. So because there's where you want the instantaneous uh, outcome and result. Okay, so, so it's, it's something about learning again about your own self guarding your own self and learning how to bring clarity and ground, grounding on that. So uh, I hope that answers your question, Caleb, uh, the importance of doing that. But I'm going to share, I'm going to put, uh, because this is the last question, I'm going to even say something, even though I use the metaphor of the farmer and the garden, right? But I want to tell you something, which is a new revelation for you all. Community is not even a garden. <laughs> community is not even a crop or a farm. I want to tell you, God, community is actually a forest. And that's even more harder to control because you don't sow, you don't, uh, you don't, you don't do it. It happens. So, so the role that I play in in this forest with the trees is I'm actually just a gatekeeper. So, so we don't even have control in a community. If we want to talk about real community growing uh, and grounds up, that's what's happened. Is that you are just guarding and letting the garden and the and letting the forest grow. And, and that's the beauty about community. You know, the community has their own strength, has their own uh, beauty. If you really want to sit down and discover, like, like Oiland discovers treasures in composing, uh, but there's also beauty. So that's where we must learn how to um, learn to appreciate and uh, enjoy such uh, beauty of community. Yeah. So, so that's something I wanted to share. I know I put something else, but yeah. So community is actually a forest and something uh, even we can't control. And, and it's a new thing that we discover every day. Yeah. So thank you for, um, you know, uh, listening. And uh, maybe even if there's anything that we want to, before we round up and we can close. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I just um, really want to thank Cynthia for doing this. It, it must have been... Yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's great. It's, it, it was awesome how you managed to just hold a conversation. Even though, even though like you said, this is the very first time you're doing this. I really yeah. hope that you can do more. And it would be very nice to gather again and you know, continue the conversation.